experiencing and going through this period of lockdown i think all of us we are very much aware how it has affected us and how it is going to affect us in the future the future we can't tell how it is and will be but certainly as long as the sun shines and the rains fall we expect the world to survive and go through this pandemic and we will overcome one day so i welcome you again to this session of a motivational tutorial i hope you are enjoying and learning i am learning too i am having a wonderful time and spending my time in this manner so that you i all of us stay at home and be away from the dreaded disease which is spreading around the world very very fast we are not safe we can be safe today but tomorrow comes another day i think this has caused lot of us to stay at home and be aware of the problem that everywhere is being faced it is not only in our country india but all over the world and it is affected no more th both the northern and the southern hemisphere and people are experiencing going through lot of hardships and difficulties if you read the newspaper if you read go through the articles in the uh, mobile or to the television you understand how difficult it is everywhere for the people and they are suffering and my heart goes out to those people who are suffering plus i wish to congratulate the team medical team police and other social workers who are doing a very remarkable job in containing helping and making this nation safe and sound once again this virus is not a virus where we can see it's not a physical enemy it's a uh, unseen enemy so it is very difficult and since vaccines have not been found so people are having hard time uh, to actually pinpoint what is the reason and what is the theory and what is the problem behind this a lot of uh, things have come out in the print media in the youtubes and other things how this virus really originated but uh, definitely everyone has his own speculations and what not so uh, beside that i think certainly it was coming out from china wuhan now wuhan is a very industrial uh, city of china it is located just in the central china and it is a really very big metropolis beside that it has a lot of universities the universities are very famous research centers are there business establishments are there one of my student gaming buddy i think his name is jintu pathak he was asking me about the corona and its effect in india but uh, since so much has been written and spoken and discussed every day of our life i was trying to avoid it but since he has asked i should answer to some of his questions now corona came to india through so many of our students who had gone or who had gone to work and they had come back from wuhan that is in china and they had come to kerala so this was first reported in january end of january and from then onwards like india is a very uh, interesting place is a place where people come from all over the world for international business religious meetings and uh, historical places tourists they come from all over the world since india is is a very a interesting place and people come from all parts of the world as tourists or to attend religious seminars and people go out of india for business and other activities so it was naturally a very uh, easy way by which the virus could come to india 
and it was not only one person it was it was of different different uh, persons who all brought it into the country and since this is a pandemic it had to affect almost the whole world because somewhere or the other we human beings are interrelated through international travel international business and the geographical location where we are so it was a natural way by which this virus came to india so that i think might not be a satisfactory answer to some of you but just a small bit of the reason or how it came to india now today my friends i have to again wish some of you a very happy ramzan mubarak because the holy month of the islamic calendar is being celebrated all over the world uh, where the fasting is being done and it's also a very uh, pleasant way to go through this ramzan period where they are fasting and worshiping their god and we wish all the friends and the viewers a very happy ramzan uh, mubarak i have some friends whom i would like to again wish them they are uh, very uh, supportive to me in their comments they don't condemn me so much and i know there are so many who want to condemn me but uh, please uh, don't kill me uh, by your condemnations because ultimately uh, god will punish me and maybe i hope this corona might not kill me before you want to kill me but then i would like to certainly wish some of you a very a th big thank you for your support and your comments and it does inspire me in the beginning i would like to say serial turkey thank you very much my friend you're a wonderful student and a great person continue to serve your family uh, wherever you are and help your brothers and sisters in their studies then victor shimbre from ATS that is in Meghalaya thank you victor keep safe and keep praying that the world will overcome this pandemic then i have a, a good friend zosa khaila that is from mizoram well this guy was a great footballer when he was young and he used to really play wonderful football with his dribbling skills and all those stuff which he used to uh, show it on the ground where we used to have this football tournament that was called the Ren Clay Cup and he was a great star and he really was a great person in playing football and i remember i saw someone one of them or somebody like him playing from Mizoram into the national level and i was very happy to see at least i knew somebody whom i could say that this person play it was a student whom i knew and he was playing in the national level so zosa thank you very much for your comments and god bless you i hope you are still playing and you continue to play when you can and it will be wonderful then i have nature vibes nature vibes thank you very much for following me and your comments i I wish that the environment and the nature that we are living in continue to bless us with wonderful blessings of nature so that we can continue to enjoy and have a wonderful uh, place where we live in. Then we have uh, other friends who are also wishing me and hoping that I continue to do this so that someone or the other I might not touch many but there will be always someone whom I can touch through this uh, session of mine which I'm going to talk 
and there is one more person who, whose name is Deep Jyoti Talukdar. Deep Jyoti Talukdar, Mahadev Pathak. These guys are a very, very good uh, friends, and I like to thank you once again. Please continue to follow me and subscribe to it. So also ring the bell. So whenever I put a new episode, you will be notified and you can watch it. Though you might not gain much because you, all of you are in college or working or doing some other activities. But at least there are some things you can remind yourself of, of how or when you were a student and what all you had studied. And you can share it with your friends. Now a bee is troubling me right in front of me. It's coming right in front of the camera and it's disturbing me. But uh, the bees are good. And wherever there is bee, there is always uh, sweetness. I'm not sweet, but the bee, you were welcome, but now it has flown away. Today, my topic to you, with you will be on the Indian geography, the geography of India. This is basically an introduction to our great subcontinent, which is India. <clears throat> now, India has a wonderful uh, story. The story of India cannot be foretold or told in a short duration of time. It is very big. So huge, the country of India and great that uh, we cannot summarize it into a 20 minutes or 30 minutes periods. But I would like to try to do it because uh, I cannot keep you too long uh, watching this. But for those who are watching it and who are students who are going to learn from it i think you should uh, take care and listen to some of the points that i'm going to mention here regarding the geography of india now india is a great one of the largest democratic country of the world now it is seventh in the land uh, percentage size and it it is only of the whole world the land surface it covers is only of 2.2 percent now india is also known as a subcontinent because almost everything what a continent should have india has that means it is diverse it is diverse in every aspect whether you talk it in physical aspect or you talk it in uh, climatic aspect or you talk it in uh, population wise now it is it has everything in it and we are so blessed to be called indians because our india is someone some a land which is blessed and i can say very proudly that india is a great country to be living in so let me tell you first thing the first physical side of india india has its mountains plateaus plains then we have the coastal regions these are broadly divided now india is found in the northern hemisphere and in the north south eastern side of the continent of asia then india is also uh, divided with the tropic of cancer which runs right across it and it divides the northern side and the southern side now that is the imaginary division of the north and south india now if you look at india in our map you will find that it expands from east to west from arunachal to gujarat it is uh, then from kashmir to kanyakumari then these are the length and breadth of our country and it is beautifully shaped with the crown of Kashmir right on top. Then we have the beautiful, the spice land of India, that is Kerala, right in the uh, bottom part. Then in the western side, we have Gujarat, the great state of Gujarat. Then right in the eastern border, we have Arunachal Pradesh and other northeastern states. In this a direction if you look at the east to west we will find that it is 2933 kilometers from arunachal to Kanya, uh, gujarat 
Then if you look at the north and south direction, we'll find it is uh, 3,214 kilometers from Kanyakumari to Kashmir right on top. Then the coastline of India, the coastline, remember the coastline is of 6,100 kilometers. Where you come from the western side, near the border of Pakistan, Gujarat, then you go round and come to Kolkata. That is the a point where Bangladesh and India meets. It is 6,100 kilometers of coastline. Then the borderline, the boundary of India is 15,200 kilometers. That's a huge. And right on top, on the western side, we have Pakistan. Then on the northern side, we have Tibet and China. On the eastern side, we have Myanmar and Bangladesh. And on the southern side, we have a small island that is uh, Sri Lanka. Now, that is the land features. We have mountains, plateaus, plains, then coastlines, and then we have a lot of hilly areas. And these are some of the uh, aspects of the physical side you find. Then let's come to the racial group. In India, we have Mongoloids, we have Aryans, and we have Dravidians. Then we have Astro-Asiatic. These are the racial groups dominating Indian continent. They are found in different, different places, but they are the major ones that are found in India. We have a lot of religions practiced in India. And I can see one, two, three, four, four religions of the world was born in India. We have Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Zionism. These are great religion practice in India. And they were born or they started in the India. Then we have Christianity, Islam. These are also another major religions which are found in India. In spite of all these differences, whether you see physical, whether you see climatic, whether you see religious or whether you see uh, race differences, India is a land which is a land of unity in diversity. Now, land of unity in diversity is brought about by the common factors of the physical landforms, monsoon climate that we experience here, and due to the modern transport system and communication that we can communicate to one another, and we do a lot of trade and commerce, plus in the national freedom movement, many, many people from all race and religion took part and were involved in the national movement. That factors make us united in this country of diversity. As I told you, our country has a lot of physical factors, which are, uh, I said, mountains, plateaus, plains, coastals, uh, coastlines. Then we also have some important islands. Those islands are two major ones. We have Lakshadweep in the western side in the Arabian Sea, close to India. Then on the southern side, southern side we have Nicobar and Andaman Islands. We have 28 states and nine union territories. 28 states. It was 29, but the states were again subdivided into union territories and it was changed. So we have 29 states 28 states and 9 territories. Now the climate of India, very important to understand the climate of India. The climate of India is due to five major factors. Five major factors. Factor number one, distance from equator. We are not very far from equator. So we are still in the tropical region, 23 degrees north and 0 degrees equator. It's not much difference. 
so we experience the warm hot weather due to the nearest from nearness that we are from the equator then again we have 6200 kilometers of coastline that again influences our climate from the eastern side and the western side the bay of bengal and the and the arabian sea they influence a lot of the climatic seasons of india then we have difference in elevation i told you himalayan and plateau and the hill regions these regions are having different types of climate because of the elevation how high they are from the sea level some of the levels are thousand plus when the sea level is above thousand plus naturally the climatic changes can be seen the temperature difference can be noticeable and we have those regions another region is natural vegetation as i told you it is blessed with a lot of nature and this natural vegetation is due to again the factors that of the rains in the western side the western ghats which we call right from the ran of coach to kanyakumari this is the western ghat region it has evergreen type of vegetation then we have uh, wind system the wind circulating in india comes from all kinds of direction it comes from the arabian sea then into from the bay of bengal then we have the northeastern type of wind which blows from the uh, china and these are the ways by which the climate of india has uh, been influenced now let's come to monsoon <clears throat> i'm trying to go fast so don't mind because if i don't go fast you will get tired of listening to me so i'm trying to go fast to make you uh, find some uh, important points by which we can you can try to understand india in a very summarized way then monsoon i think monsoon is a seasonal wind which is falling and bringing a lot of lot of rains into india and this monsoon wind is very important because it helps in the change of temperature we experience a hot summer then suddenly the rain comes and the monsoon season starts and the temperature drops and it is becomes pleasant plus the the nature thrives on the rain which is falling plus it is very good for the people who are involved in agriculture because basically india we can find almost 75 to 76 percent of the people of indian indian continent are involved in agriculture and that has helped in our economy also so this monsoon rain is a blessing to india rainfall pattern in india is very varied very varied if you go down to the western side gujarat and rajasthan and the western side of punjab you will find only 50 to 20 centimeters of rainfall throughout the year but if you come to the eastern side of india and if you come on the malabar coast and uh, the konkan coast there they experience 200 to 300 centimeters of rain plus if you come to meghalaya especially meghalaya you will find they go to 1260 centimeters of rain annually falling in meghalaya and assam of course 200 plus rainfall centimeters of rainfall falls in assam also so there are so many factors but the rainfall is actually influences influenced by the south east monsoon wind system which blows and blows over uh, the western cars and falls into the bay of bengal then it from the bay of bengal it churns and will goes up into the eastern side of northeastern side of india and those are the two factors one southeast monsoon rain and the, another one when it returns back the retreating monsoon is known as the northeast monsoon rainfall the main seasons every country has its main seasons we also have some main seasons but it is not summer winter autumn or uh, spring we have pre-monsoon monsoon pre-winter pre and winter then what are the types of vegetation that is found in india 
the types are evergreen evergreen vegetation is found in india in the coastal side especially as i told you in the konkan and the malabar coast coastal region this area has evergreen type of vegetation then we have monsoonal like in assam we have monsoonal type of vegetation then we have dry and thorny vegetation that is found in western side gujarat rajasthan west punjab then we have grasslands in maharashtra madhya pradesh uttar pradesh saurashtra region they have the andhra pradesh in the central part of the deccan region we have the uh, grassland regions and also some places in uh, punjab and haryana then we have the mangroves region these mangroves regions are found in the area where the re, uh, river water drains out into the sea so we have the ganga and brahmaputra draining out their water into the bay of bengal so in that area a lot of mangrove vegetation is found then we have godavari krishna and kaveri river falling into the bay of bengal in that region again lot of mangrove vegetation is found then we have mountain vegetation this mountain vegetation in the northern part of india like uh, you come just from shimla kashmir then you come to darjeeling sikkim arunachal and the whole northeast comes under the mountainous type of uh, vegetation where different different uh, trees or vegetations are found which we will discuss later now population of india the population of india is the second largest in the world lot of population is there plenty of population is there and up has the highest while arunachal has the lowest now the growth of population is all naturally because of two reasons and that is one is uh, migration this migration is called internal now people moving from one state or to one place within the state intra and interstate uh, migration then we have external migration the external migration people coming from outside the country and living and finding a place in india that also has caused population to increase now indian economy was great indian economy was great but recently because of lot of reasons a lot of reasons then we cannot pinpoint only one reason we cannot say because of corona because uh, corona has spoiled the whole economy of the world yes it has done that but there are so many other reasons also before before corona our economy was poor and now corona has made it worse but we find indian economy has faced many problems from 1951 when the first five year plan began indian economy has faced a lot of problems and one of the major problem is because of the slow growth on the per capita income plus the pressure of population is too much on the indian economy lot of poverty lot of poverty and sab aadmi sab jyada depend karte hain agriculture hum sune hain hum naam padhe hain ki america mein एग्रीकल्चर करने वाले जीरो पर बहुत कम है बहुत कम है ज़्यादा आदमी सब टाउन शहर और इंडस्ट्रीज और फैक्ट्रीज और ऑफिस में काम करते हैं वो लोग डिपेंड करते हैं इंडस्ट्रीज में जहाँ एग्रीकल्चर में बहुत कम वहाँ पर पाए जाते हैं तो एकदम हमारे हिंदुस्तान का जैसा है वैसा वहाँ पर उल्टा हो गया है इसलिए वहाँ का डिवलपमेंट डिपेंडेंट ऑन एग्रीकल्चर नहीं है लेकिन वो लोग का एग्रीकल्चर पूरा दुनिया को खिला रहा है ये बात सही है कि अमेरिका का देश बहुत बड़ा है लेकिन वो लोग का पॉपुलेशन भी बहुत कम है और हमारा हमारे हिंदुस्तान में अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट बेरोजगारी बहुत ज़्यादा है और ये ज़्यादा होते जा रहा है अभी तो ये कोरोना वायरस का पेंडेमिक जो हिंदुस्तान को फेस किया है इसके कितना लाख लाख आदमी सब काम छूट गया कंपनी से निकल गए जा नहीं पा रहे हैं काम नहीं मिल रहा है इंडस्ट्री सब बंद है दुकान होटल छोटा छोटा कारखाना ये सब बंद पड़ा हुआ है अब ये सब को भरने के लिए फिर से कब कितना साल या महीना लगेगा कोई बोल नहीं सकते हैं अगर यही हालत रहेगा 
तो हम लोग का एम्प्लॉयमेंट जो प्रॉब्लम था वो तो दो गुना तीन गुना ज़्यादा बढ़ जाएगा और इसके चलते इंडियन का इनकम इंडियन का ग्रोथ में बहुत बड़ा धक्का पहुंचेगा। चलिए बात तो छोड़ देते हैं खुदा ना करे कि ऐसा समय आ जाएगा कि हम लोग को काम नहीं मिलेगा लेकिन अगर जो भी काम कर रहे हैं अगर हम सही तरह से करते रहेंगे अल्लाह का आशीर्वाद रहेगा भगवान का आशीर्वाद रहेगा तो सही सलामत हम लोग का ज़िंदगी गुजर चल जाएगा इसलिए हम लोग चाहते हैं कि हम लोग फिर से दोबारा से हमारा ज़िंदगी स्टार्ट हो फिर से हम लोग का ज़िंदगी फिर से कायम हो जाए गाड़ी घोड़ा सब चलने शुरू कर दे फैक्ट्री सब वो फिर से काम आ, आ, स्टार्ट हो जाए तो हम लोग का एम्प्लॉयमेंट और अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट का प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व कर लेगा अभी अभी चलते हैं हिंदुस्तान का नदियों के बारे में हिंदुस्तान में बहुत सारे नदी हैं एक तरफ से देखने से दूसरी तरफ से देखने हम गिनती करते रह जाएंगे लेकिन नदी का हम लोग नाम भी भूल जाएंगे छोटा छोटा नदी निकल जाता है जब बरसात का सीजन आता है नाला भी नदी बन जाता है लेकिन सब बड़ा बड़ा नदी जो किताब में पाए जाते हैं उसी तरह का हम ज़्यादा नाम लेंगे हम देखेंगे कि नदी अब नदी दो सब नदी तो पहाड़ की तरफ से आते हैं हम चलते हैं पंजाब हरियाणा की तरफ पंजाब हरियाणा के तरफ में एक नदी था बहुत बड़ा नदी जो उसको इंडस बोलते हैं इंडस का तीन मा बड़ा नदी है जो उसका ट्रिब्यूटरीज है जो इंडस को पानी देता है रवि सुटलेज और बीस ये रवि सुटलेज और बीस ये तीन नदी जो हमारे हिंदुस्तान हिमाचल प्रदेश हरियाणा ये ये जो स्टेट पंजाब होके जब गुजरते हैं ये लोग का पानी और ये लोग का जहाँ हो के गुजरते हैं उसको बहुत फर्टाइल कर देते हैं और दूसरी नदी है गंगा गंगा नदी ये नदी जो आती है हमारा हिमालय से पूरा सेंट्रल प्लेन उत्तर प्रदेश बिहार वेस्ट बंगाल इसका थ्रू से पार होती है तो ये बहुत एरिया को इतना फर्टाइल कर देती है कि हम लोग उस जगह को बोलते हैं सेंट्रल प्लेन और दूसरा नदी है ब्रह्मपुत्र ये ब्रह्मपुत्र एक नदी है जो ये भी चाइना हो करके आती है और पूरा आसाम का थ्रू आ करके गिर जाती है बांग्लादेश में ये नदी भी बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है क्योंकि इस नदी के आर पार नॉर्थ और साउथ बैंक जो कहते हैं यहाँ पर बहुत अच्छा से एग्रीकल्चर का जगह होता है जहाँ आसाम के वासी सब एग्रीकल एग्रीकल्चर प्रैक्टिस करते हैं अब बहुत फर्टाइल वर्ल्ड फर्टाइल बट देर आर सो मेनी आदर ट्रिब्यूटरीज ऑल्सो ज्वाइनिंग दिस मेजर रिवर्स इन द नॉर्दर्न साइड इन द नॉर्दर्न साइड देर आर सो मेनी ट्रिब्यूटरीज लाइक वी हैव द ट्रिब्यूटरीज अलाकंदा जमुना रामगंगा गमोत्री गंदक सोन कोसी ये सब बड़ा बड़ा नदी है जो गंगा के ट्रिब्यूटरीज कहला जाते हैं अब ब्रह्मपुत्र का ट्रिब्यूटरीज हम लोग सुनेंगे सुबानसरी जय भराली धनसरी पुटीमारी पागलाडिया मनास और हमारे मनास तो बहुत पास ही में है जो हम लोग हर समय देखते रहते हैं ये भी एक बहुत बड़ा ट्रिब्यूटरीज है जो ब्रह्मपुत्र नदी को अपना पानी दे करके ब्रह्मपुत्र को बहुत माइटी ब्रह्मपुत्र बना लेता है उसके बाद पास जाते हैं ये हम तो नॉर्दर्न नदी का बात किया अभी सदर्न नदी का बात करते हैं सदर्न नदी में बहुत है गोदावरी कृष्णा कावेरी ये सब नदी सब हैं जो ईस्टर्न साइड फ्लो करते हैं दे कम फ्रॉम द वेस्टर्न घाट्स एंड दे फ्लो टूअर्ड्स द ईस्टर्न साइड then there are two rivers tapti and narmada which flows on the western side and they release their water into the arabian sea those are the two major rivers which are flowing into the western side now one more point i like to say on the northern plains i know you are getting tired because it is almost becoming a one period class for you but still i want to finish this point before i take a break and you also can take break some people had come uh, and they wanted to meet me so i had to go and meet them i have to meet them also 
because they have come from far i think there was somebody important he had to come to take my signature so i had i have to go and meet him now northern plain i'll just finish it up with this northern plain northern plain we have western plain which is in the saurashtra gujarat maharashtra area the western plain then we have the punjab haryana plain then we have ganga plain then we have north bengal plain then we have brahmaputra plain these are the major plain regions where lot of agriculture is practiced and these agricultures are very important for our economy i have told you and uh, it is these plains are important because they contribute to the industrial sector plus lot of things related to agriculture industries are set up around these centers and the density of population in this region is huge because it has everything for a man to survive with land good water good climate and abundance of natural resource where men like to live this is found in this western to eastern side of the central plain of india so my friends I think I have taken quite a lot of time of you during this uh, geography. It's, it's a big uh, chapter, you know. It's a huge chapter. I hope you will get something, and I will continue in the next session uh, about the same thing about geography of India. We will cover the characteristics of coastal region plus the importance of uh, monsoon, then the vegetations what is found in India, and then this geography of India. will be summarized and finished until then i wish you all the best the lockdown period will one day very soon will end i hope so i hope so and uh, we will be living a normal life no i doubt that is possible normal life i am i am doubting normal life is not possible after this pandemic uh, man was known as a social animal but now man has to be a, a loner man has to live alone and do not uh, require so many uh, people anyway time has not come for that yet but eventually it will come but then until then you and i you and i we have this medium by which we can uh, see each other and we can talk to each other and we can learn from each other so keep in touch keep in touch and eat good food drink plenty of water with lemon very good for your health if you are fat it will reduce your weight and hot drinks are important hot drinks are important for you so to stay healthy do a lot of exercise and keep your mind fresh don't go into depression don't go into fights with your parents and mom and dad or brothers and sisters love them yeah it's all right it's all right this is our world the world is so small right now the world is within our four walls so this four walls you have to love it unless we love learn to love our four walls there is no other wall bigger than this and that is going to help us if we don't love the four walls that we live in i wish you all the best please do subscribe to my channel uh, also share your comments and please remember to ring that bell that bell you know on the side personalized bell so that every time i upload the button will ring and a message will go to tell you that a new video has been uploaded for us to learn